Calculus Math 11. Dots. Now in section 2.3, we learned that we can solve oblique triangles when given an opposite side and angle pair, and any other piece of information, be it a side or an angle. This either is ASA or AAS or SSA, which can lead to the ambiguous case. But what if we're given two sides and the angle in between? For instance, find the length of side A in this diagram. Well, we can't use the sine law because we don't have an opposite side and angle pairing. And we can't use Pythagoras or any of our basic trigonometry because this isn't a right triangle. So we need to go back to the drawing board and see if we can derive a formula to help us solve for A, but only in terms of the given information, side C, side B, and angle A itself. Well, the first thing to do again is drop a perpendicular from C down to the base. And this gives us two right triangles with a height of h. The other thing that I've done on the diagram is shown that if the whole base has a length of c, we can split that into lengths of x and c minus x. And now once again, our friend, Mr. Pythagoras, comes out to play. In the triangle on the right, we have a squared equals h squared plus c minus x squared. And on the left, we have b squared equals x squared plus h squared. Now notice that both of these have h squared as a part of it. So let's isolate the h squared. This is h squared equals b squared minus x squared. And over here on the right, before I do that, I just want to expand this c minus x squared into a slightly more conventional form of c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. So we will have h squared equals a squared minus c squared plus 2cx minus x squared. And again, since both of these are equal to h squared, let's set them as equal to each other. Now, if you recall, the goal was to solve for a. So let's isolate a squared here. Also notice that on both sides we have minus x squared, so if we add x squared to both sides, these will cancel out. Solving for a squared now, we get a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2cx. And this is pretty good, except we've still got that x value in there, and I really want to get rid of that. Well, let's look at what we know about x in terms of a and b in this triangle. Of course, the cosine of angle A is equal to x over B, which means that x is equal to B times the cosine of A. So we'll substitute that here for x, giving us A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of angle A. And there's a nice little formula giving us a squared in terms of only b, c, and angle a, the given information. And this is the cosine law for any triangle a, b, c. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of a. Now since the naming is really arbitrary, and maybe it's not angle a that we're given, you could manipulate the variables around here and also say, b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b, or c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. Well, now that we know this, let's go back up and solve the original question. In this triangle, we want it to solve for side a. So let's grab the cosine law as we know it. So a squared equals, etc. And when we substitute in the known values for b and c and angle a, we've got 8.9 squared plus 10.5 squared, and so on. Now we want to get our calculator and type this in. So 
So we get a squared is 52.76, etc., which we'll round off to a is approximately 7.3 centimeters. Now if we wanted to find the other angles of this triangle, we could use the sine law. Or, since we know all the side lengths of this triangle, we could also use the cosine law. Now, normally I would only use the cosine law to find an angle if all that I knew was the three side lengths and no angles. But I'll use it in this case as a demonstration. Let's start by finding angle B. Let's grab the version of cosine law that uses angle B. Now before we substitute any values, let's solve first for angle B. First I'm going to isolate 2AC cosine B equal to a squared plus c squared minus b squared. And let's divide both sides by 2ac. Now if the cosine of b is equal to this, let's find angle b by doing the inverse cosine of a squared plus c squared minus b squared all over 2ac. Now let's substitute in our values of a, b, and c so that we can solve. When I calculate this, I like to just take the top and calculate it first. Otherwise, I'm afraid that I might mess up with my order of operations and get a crazy number. So the first thing I'm going to do is 7.3 squared plus 10.5 squared minus 8.9 squared, getting 84.33. Then I multiply the bottom, getting 153.3. And now I'll calculate the inverse cosine of that ratio, getting 56.6. So that's using the cosine law, both to find a side and to calculate an angle. Now, owing to the fact that cosine is going to be positive for acute angles and negative for obtuse angles, there is no ambiguous case for the cosine law. The, the ambiguous, ambiguous case. There is no ambiguous case for the cosine law. It will always give you the proper amount. Well, it's time for me to say goodbye, but before I go, Here's one more question for you to try on your own. A new highway through the mountains requires a tunnel through the mountain as shown in the diagram. How long will that tunnel be? So there we go. Until next time, pencil sharp, and I'll see you in class.